Hey everyone. Hey there guys, Unofficial MCU here, hope you're all doing well, and welcome to my She-Hulk episode 2 review, thoughts and opinions, I'll have some theories and speculations as well towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Episode 1 is already here on the channel here talking about that, reviewing about that, and episode 1 did a great job, a phenomenal job at that, setting up kind of where we are within the MCU here, setting up our characters here that we're going to be seeing throughout the show. However, I also believe that episode 2 honestly tops that, it gives us more of a plot of what this show is truly really going to be about, where it's going in the direction and also bringing back some familiar faces from the past. Episode 2 is called Superhuman Law. In the aftermath of Jennifer Walters' rather literal court battle with Tatiana in She-Hulk Episode 1, the media labeled her as She-Hulk. She blew up, of course, and was this huge name, and the nickname is the very much not that very fond of. She doesn't really like it all that much. But as Bruce Banner warned her, these superhero names have a way of sticking around. In this video, I'm also taking a read from Den of Geek on their kind of review and recap here of the the She-Hulk episode 2 here, so I'll have them linked down in the description down below for you guys to check out as well. They should just kind of give an in-general recap here of everything that went on here with the episode here, from things you've missed, recapping it with little easter eggs and that type of stuff, references and everything like that, and as I had mentioned also, I'm going to have some more theories and speculations closer towards the end of the video, so it makes you guys also stay in tune for that. Walking into a bar full of Relevillers who are all chanting and ready to celebrate Jen's victory here and also her reveal here as being the She-Hulk here to the media. She is almost immediately approached by a co-worker, Dennis, who pours scorn on her new identity and refers to another woman as it. We also surely will enjoy watching Dennis get his company of some point in the show here as well, because he appears to have a no redeeming features whatsoever. Indeed, not everyone is impressed with She-Hulk as well, as her new fans on the street and her boss swiftly fires her for messing up last week's important case with her son. Heroic scene here and say, Saving the courtroom. Jen struggles to get a new gig here as potential employers line up to refer to her as a distraction and a sideshow here with her She-Hulk powers and everything like that. While also her friend Nikki is trying to help and get her spirits up and help her find a new job as well. Her confidence then takes a further knock during a family dinner where she feels overwhelmed by their enthusiasm and support to adjacent comments as well. The whole scene there with her family and my thoughts and opinions was honestly hilarious. I absolutely love Loved it. Also playing back with what we had there with the post credit scene there for this uh, episode here as well and how it played back to her family there, her helping around lifting around stuff for her family there as well. It's honestly really cool with the She-Hulk show and what they're doing with the post credit scenes. They're kind of just showing us Marvel fans that every little single post credit scene in every project or show or movie that we may get is going to plan out the next five movies or something like that and plan out the next couple of things here that is in store for the characters here that are a part of those movies or shows here as well. However, I will say, I think that the uh, very last episode, episode 9 for the She-Hulk show here, will actually be more serious, rather, and actually have her doing something that would set up her next adventures, where she would be appearing next here, and what shows, or maybe movies, uh, where she's kind of going from there. Continuing on here with what the article says, luckily, but not that luckily as well, the opposing GLKH lawyer on the last week's case, Holloway, has become interested and impressed with Jen and wants to recruit her as the face of their superhuman law division. But it's not Jen that they really want to employ, it's She-Hulk, and Jen has to swallow her pride and become kind of a performing seal for GLKOH if she wants to keep paying her bills. Jen's best friend as well, Nikki, who's also joined at GLKH, is much more thrilled about their high-flying career glow-up, and the two go on to meet their new co-worker, Disney Pug, which I am pretty sure I mispronounced, so sorry about that. He of course hooks them up with a nice little welcome kind of gift basket and also tells them to net the probably the, the best bathroom at, at their floor there as well. Jen's first client is none other than Emil Blonsky, who's played by Tim Roth, aka Abomination, aka the villain from the weirdly and constantly in canon Incredible Hulk from 2007, 2008, I want to say, movie starring Edward Norton as Bruce Banner and the Hulk. So, of course, there was a recast there with Mark Ruffalo after that movie, which is very interesting. Jen will be running Emil's Perel case as She-Hulk as she pays him a visit in maximum security jail, where she's not allowed to actually be She-Hulk, which I guess, sure, why not? If it gives the Marvel VFX team a break from trying to rapidly improve their CGI in the show, then they're all for it. However, in my own thoughts and opinions, it makes sense. I mean, they wouldn't want her using her powers, I guess, in a high facility, security facility. I mean, I don't really think that's an excuse for them using the VFX or anything like that, in my own thoughts and opinions. Emil goes on to explain that he was a victim of circumstances, and now he is reformed, choosing not 
not to become the abomination after having found inner peace and much like we saw with hulk in between infinity war and endgame and seven new soulmates as well who he met through the prison pen pal program jen decides to take this case but things seem to be immediately falling apart when the abomination is in scene fighting in an underground fight club having escaped his cell now this year's i think the same uh fight club that we saw in the shang chi movie which does kind of create a little bit of confusion here from where everything is taking place here in the mcu timeline i'll talk about that in just a moment and i also will dive deeper on into that in a separate future video here on the channel as well because it honestly is kind of confusing here from what we actually officially have from marvel versus when the stuff is actually taking place also basing it off of the different events there as well that might take place in other movies as well there are a few mcu connections in the she hulks episode 2 and of course emil blonsky is the standout out of all things as the article continues to say we've only revisited the abomination once since the incredible hulk in 2008 i believe it came out and that was in the shang chi movie as i had mentioned where he was fighting wong in a underground club type of thing and fighting place so we now know when the show it takes place in the mcu timeline but maybe not this isn't the last we'll see of abomination as he's also set up to pop in the upcoming disney plus animated series marvel zombies there as well though he can probably assume that he will be a multiverse variant of the character with the whole multiverse saga and everything going on with that as well something i haven't actually even considered it that much would be seeing different variants of hulk or she hulk and the abomination kind of those big monster like characters that we have in the mcu we also say a goodbye to bruce banner in this episode very weirdly a sicarian ship that is seen flying him into space this is the same spaceship that we saw in episode one that made them crash the car and get into the whole car accident and really create the whole she hulk character as well but the reason for his journey will stay a mystery for now it really reminds me a lot of the age of ultron movie and how that ended with hulk flying the quinjet just like out into the middle of nowhere into the middle of space and then we later saw him a couple years later appearing in the thor ragnarok movie what he's been up to what he was been doing and so if they had the guess as the article continues to say it would be that he fathered a child during his stretch on sakar and then an mcu introduction to his son sakar is in the wind this did happen in the comics and while marvel studios don't actually follow those all those storylines all that accurately completely because the mcu is kind of its own thing it's just based off of the marvel comics it wouldn't be another good out for mark ruffalo if he ever decided he would had enough for playing the hulk here in the mcu which i think we're still very far stretched from seeing mark ruffalo ever actually like leave the mcu i think he's still going to be in it for the next good i want to say like anywhere from five to ten years honestly definitely for the next couple of avenger movies that definitely is a very good theory and speculation that this article does here however i probably never would have actually thought about that honestly having hulk maybe have fathered some type of child while he was on sakar in the events of thor ragnarok there and before that even as well however there are also definitely other theories and speculations to be thrown out there so i'll be diving deeper onto that in a separate future video here on the channel so if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and join us here today overall this was honestly a really great episode people are, are loving this show so very much episode one was already very great it received very well reviews and people were talking about it they said a lot of great things about it the cgi doesn't really take away from the story all that much and for those people that are still kind of fixated on the whole cgi honestly just let it go and focus on the story because it's honestly still a great story in my own thoughts and opinions and the same thing applies for a lot of other people out there that have been talking about this as well episode one of course as i had mentioned at the beginning of this video did a great job of setting up our characters their origin stories and everything like that that was going on with all that with the she hulk character and jennifer walters and also hulk what he's been doing what he's been up to ever since after the events of avengers endgame which really just seems that he's kind of just been chilling around on this beach in mexico and his little laboratory and kind of working on a few different little things there as well however we also did actually see him in a few post credit scenes uh for the shang chi movie there as well so i'm interested to see on what he was doing with that as well i think aside from dr strange i definitely think that bruce banner slash the hulk is going to almost be like a new leader of the avengers for sure here in the upcoming next couple of years here or at least for the next avengers movie i think he's going to be kind of like that new leader so to speak because all of the original six avengers are kind of out we don't have cap we don't have tony hawkeye is kind of i think retired now for the most part they never really played that leader role so to speak as well same thing can be applied for thor i don't really think he ever played that leader role all that much he doesn't really care about the avengers all that much completely he's not really as connected to them as he was with the guardians or same thing for the revengers that we saw in thor ragnarok as well anyway guys i want to know of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below i'd love to hear what you guys all think i'm very excited to see where the continuing plot here is going to go here for the show everything that's going on with the abomination and everything like that we're going to be talking about the she hulk show here off and on on the channel in the next couple of weeks here and also having weekly review videos just like this one where we talk about theories and speculations and kind of review it all down here
here with different references, Easter eggs, and now breakdowns here for each and every episode. We're going to be talking about the She-Hulk show here on the channel, and not just that, but all types of other Marvel news, leaks, theories, and breakdowns here on the channel as well. So if you guys are interested in any of that, please hit the subscribe button and join us here today. You can also check out our Instagram, Unofficial MCU, for more Marvel-related content. The link down in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching today's video, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a great one, guys. Peace out.